أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم محمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بمددكم من نزلكم سيدي رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم وأنا عبدك العجيز الضعيف ومسكين وظالم جهد and if by the grace of Allah that uh, I'm still in existence, we took a path in which to be nothing. That Allah's rahmah inshaAllah to be upon us and to dress us and bless us all inshaAllah and forgive all our shortcomings and wrongdoings and wrong actions. Wa bismillahir rahmanir raheem, ati Allah, ati Rasul, wa ulul amri minkum. And Thursday nights we want to talk about the tafakkur and the importance of tafakkur and it is a spiritual channel in which to open up and this line of communication that is necessary for the perfection of one's faith. <coughs> there can be no real faith without the understanding of the world of light and without the contemplation people are getting lost in words and saying, there is no such thing as meditation because they're thinking this is something from a, a different culture, something to do with holding a tree, something Allah knows what they're thinking. This is about stopping and from Holy Qur'an, none know but the people of tafakkur that to stop and to contemplate and to realize there's a light within the heart how to bring that light out, bring that reality out and to operate from the soul. That we've said many times there's a hearing, there's a seeing, there's five senses that people are using of the physical but those senses each have a matching spiritual. So that's why when Allah says, you have ears but you don't hear. So this is all tafakkur. This is all the contemplation. Why would Allah say, you have ears but you don't hear? Is He talking about deaf people and, and, and mocking handicapped things? Safir. He's not saying that. He's saying the ones whom ha who, who physically can hear and their ears are actually healthy, you really can't hear. And they have eyes but they don't see. It's not the mocking of blind people. It's obvious blind people don't see. But He says, those whom are visually seeing you don't see. So there's something that we should be hearing and we don't hear it. There's definitely something we should be seeing and we don't see it. And as a result of not hearing it, not seeing it, Allah says, your heart is now like a sheet has been covering it. And that's why when we go to the Kaaba there's a khiswa on top of the Kaaba. Because your heart is actually the Kaaba, Allah is showing you a reality outside of you before inside of you. Because for me to understand this reality within me, Allah says, that's harder. So why you don't go look and you go for Umrah and you say, oh, this is my heart and I should be circumambulating my heart. I should be saying, la baik, la baik to my heart that I'm here, I'm coming to hear, I'm, I'm coming to, to listen to this command because your house is in my heart. It was all a symbolism of what we should have been understanding within myself. That's why we started with the moth, the, everyone comes with this love and then circumambulates with this love and Allah is just saying that I can be inside your heart where not only you have to get this ticket and come all this distance but your heart can be my house and your heart can be my Kaaba. And if your heart becomes my Kaaba, you become like a Qibla, people will find faith around you. They'll be all around you because of that love, because of that light, because of that nourishment that is now appearing within your reality. So everything was based on the tafakkur. How am I going to hear and what does Allah want me to hear? The ears being the first and this is the chain that when the ears hear they begin to teach you spiritually that are you really hearing the guidance? Are you sitting in this association online or in the presence for years but yet you really don't know anything from their teaching? And then that's the first sign. If I sit with you and ask you some private questions that, do you know about this and that? And they say, what? What are you talking about? What? 
for five years, ten years, three years you didn't hear that? So then you're one of those whom you had ears but you didn't hear. So you're assuming everyone is hearing these talks and understanding them or many just come for the good food and maybe entertainment value. So that's what Allah is saying, you have ears but you're not really hearing, are you hearing what's taking place? And you have eyes but you don't yet see. So what are your eyes coming to look for? Are your eyes under the allurement for like eye candy? It wants everything that is flattering and nice to the eyes and maybe there's a spiritual eye in which should be opening. Means that we should be sitting and making a tafakkur and contemplating and when I sit to, to learn my contemplation I'm asking Ya Rabbi that I have ears but yet I don't hear. And they come and teach the first level of hearing is hear your consciousness. Hear yourself talking to you, Allah will push your real reality uh, that's in the heavens to come and talk to you and begin to tell you. And anything that you're hearing if it's telling you bad about something and about someone that's the shaitan whispering to you. If your hearing is coming against you this is from Rahman. When your shaitan comes, he complains about everyone, oh this shaykh was wrong, these people were wrong, that place was wrong, though they wronged you. Anything like that, that comes to make your ego feel happy is a waswas of a shaitan. If shaitan's not coming then it's from the bad jinn that can access and come close. Anything, anything come to that ear that to glorify my status is not from Rahman. So they say, exactly what am I hearing Shaykh, how do I know what I'm hearing? If it come and tell you to knock yourself down that you're nothing, you're no one, you are wrong. Take a path of humility, lower yourself, go now and do your prayers, go do ibadah, go do worship, go give a donation, go feed some people, that's from the soul. So then that's the hearing. And we took a life in which to hear, hear. And when you're going to need it is that when you accompany a shaykh you're going to start to be tested. Not the testing of crushing only, then you're going to be able to see that when you close your eyes are you connecting with your soul, are you connecting with that light, are you trying to get all the information necessary for your life and then people will begin to appear within your life. Don't presume everything that glitters is gold. Don't think that everything coming your way is a gift from Allah it's a test from Allah You don't know who's coming into your life, who greets you, who talks to you to take everything away from you, to harm you, to do whatever is the test that's coming. It's not that everything is great that coming to me, oh because I have a shaykh, no. We don't understand what's coming, Allah wants to send a test. Send somebody who's about to empty your account, take money from you. And you smile and think that you're going to… the shaykh is not there to cheat for you. So this is a, a lot of your questions are going to come right now. Is that, can shaykh give answers for me, give me the, the, the quiz. The shaykh is not here to assist you in cheating on your test from Allah to get an answer from the shaykh. No, no shaykh should be giving you an answer. He should be giving you the tools to make the right choice. It's not about cheating Allah's tests. Oh shaykh tell me, when is the next problem coming? Is this person going to be a problem in my life? If it's real shaykh has said no, <laughs> hands crossed. Maybe yes, maybe no, you shouldn't have been asking me. I'm not here to help you cheat. If the person coming to kill you, yes, they'll intervene because your life is in, at risk. It means severe emergency, they will intercede inshaAllah with Allah's assistance and permission. But we're not talking about that, we're talking of the day-to-day -day activity of nefarious characters in this wonderful play Allah has set up, like a Shakespearean play. Somebody's coming with a dagger, somebody coming with a story, somebody coming with a book and then I think I have a shaykh and he's going to help me cheat through the whole game. So no, the shaykh is not there to answer any question. He's there to teach, why aren't you sitting and listening and meditating? If you begin to open your hearing you'll hear 
us talking to you. You'll hear us inspiring you. You'll hear us warning you. And they want to open a channel of communication at an encrypted level. Now if you want encrypted messages you use WhatsApp. But this is Yahoo. <laughs> that Yahoo, the fake one, they took it out of business because they weren't allowed to use Allah's name. The real Yahoo is that they meditate and contemplate and all the encrypted messages that Allah wants to inspire within the heart will begin to come. If you condition your eyes and your hearing means you connect with them, you'll ask the question that, who's this person appearing to me? What is it that this person is going to want? Means then when you live a life of that reality, your hearing and your seeing is your protection. Whenever the person that is coming into that scene, you have a sense within your heart, what this person is entering into my play for? Are they coming to harm me? Are they coming to trick me? Are they, are they coming with not the a pure intention into my life. So that's what Allah are trying to build. Let's send all these different types of things in life and why is it that you're not using your spiritual connection when you are enrolled in a spiritual school? Why aren't you using your hearing to hear with your soul that, oh this, this I'm getting a vibe from this person is not coming straight up, coming with the different code to, to test us. Some people come like they're going to be your best friend but their actions will show you, look like they're coming to test us, you know, come to an event with nothing on to see if maybe we'll throw them out and see if we're extremists. No, they're being sent to test and calibrate. But if you're too wrapped in dunya, you're no longer using your spiritual senses and you're not catching all of these signals. And that's where the danger in your test is showing. Why didn't you pick that up? Why didn't your hearing pick it up? Why didn't your spiritual seeing pick it up? Why aren't you sort of continuously having your radar out? That as soon as somebody says, hello, your radar is picking up a channel. And with the, the madad of the shaykhs, you'll be surprised that even with your connection, truth serums will be coming. Because again, people don't understand, when the shaykhs come with the light of truth, they merely, their heart opens. The light comes out and everybody begin to speak all sorts of badness that hiding within their heart. And anyone who's traveled with the shaykhs understands. They stand next to somebody, somebody comes and approaches and begin to say all sorts of things that they thought would be hidden within themselves. Because you can't hide the truth in front of them. The real reality of the person begins to come out. Because when the truth comes, the falsehood, they don't come together. And Allah described that the falsehood by its nature is perishing. So it means all of these faculties are not just a, a part-time hobby, it's a way in which to live especially upon an earth that becoming more and more difficult. Where more and more of these characters are entering daily into my play. And if I'm not listening with my heart and I'm not listening with my eyes, I don't know who's coming to harm me, to trick me, to fool me. And all of that coming by permission of Allah because why you're not using your senses, why you're not using the faculties of your tafakkur and your contemplation. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding that this is not something small, it's a way in which to survive difficulties that are coming upon the earth and a way in which to always make the most correct choice because you're sitting and you're contemplating, not just heedlessly entering into every action. But again that when you do begin to open that reality and you begin to hear, you begin to hear you're held to a much higher standard of reality. If you hear their warning and you continuously deny the warning, then difficulty is coming. So not that I can say, I'm ignorant, I didn't know. No, Allah just says, no, you're trained one. See the reality of taqwa is not somebody saying they fear Allah If their ears and their eyes are not open, it's as if they're behind 70 feet of metal 
They have no taqwa. There's no taqwa for somebody who has no opening on their abilities. They don't fear anything, they don't see anything, they don't hear anything. What Allah describing of a real taqwa is when Allah open their senses. They hear, they see, they feel. They know if they do something wrong and grossly incorrect, Prophet seals everything. It's finished. The, like a like a metal parde comes and they're locked off. They don't hear, they don't see, they don't feel. To them that is a punishment greater than death. That's an azab now upon the earth. If for one moment Allah had opened everything and the next moment Allah closes everything, they would better to die in that state than enter into that state. That's taqwa. Because of the opening they don't risk that reality. They don't risk that association and that nearness. So it means then that is the way and the door to taqwa and good consciousness. Is that to open the realities, then you become more conscious of the reality and you become more frightened that I'm going to lose what God has opened for me now. And they become more conscious, more conscious. InshaAllah, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly, join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.